I'm Josh Paulison, and this is... Inspector Josh Investigates TV. I study TV shows for writing lessons based on what the writers did right, and where some pony done messed it all up. And today, we are looking at My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 2, Episode number 15, The Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000. Warning, spoilers are ahead. If you hate spoilers like me, then I recommend that you stop this here right now. We're going to talk about why villains do bad things. Normally we think, what is the problem that my villain can cause? But usually what a villain is trying to do is provide a solution for another problem. For example, Flem and Flam caused problems. So they were trying to provide a solution for having enough apple cider and arguably also for themselves making some money. And in most cases, this is how villains work, how bad guys work. They aren't going out looking for a problem to create. They're looking for a solution to a problem. That problem that they're trying to solve could be an epi economical problem. Maybe they are seeing that, hey, you know what? There is a great demand for drugs. And obviously solving that problem isn't really a great problem to solve. But they look at that and go, oh, well, you know what? Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide this. I'm going to help with that. Cool. Or maybe somebody else is looking at this big superhero group and they're like hey you know what they're causing a problem they're keeping us from being able to rob people and all that i'm gonna solve this problem i am the solution and most villains are not looking for a problem to create but a solution to create to provide in order to solve what they perceive as a problem there are several ways that bad guys can do this and they are actually all showcased in this episode very well the first one is well first let me go through a list of all of them four big ways that bad guys can try to create a solution that doesn't really work one of them is that the problem isn't a problem the second is the problem isn't the problem the third one is the solution causes other problems and the fourth one is the solution isn't a solution first we have the problem isn't a problem flim and flam Threaten the business. Now, if Flim and Flam produced inferior cider, that would only strengthen the Apple family's position in the market. The Apple family could either charge more or Flim and Flam would have to charge less, assuming Flim and Flam's quality when their machine worked at regular speed was still inferior. So even though the Apple family was concerned about Flim and Flam running them out of business, if they really were not able to produce cider of an equal quality, the Apple family could have really positioned themselves in the market better. Personally, I would argue that this was a case of the problem not actually being that big of a problem. It seemed like it was, but long term, I don't think it actually would have been. Going on to number two, the problem isn't the problem. This is much more specific. A lot of times we might see that, well, there is a problem, but that isn't it. The difference between the problem isn't a problem and the problem isn't the problem is that in the former, there is no problem, and there's not really a comparable problem that is what other people are perceiving. In the second one, the problem isn't the problem. There could very well be an issue, but maybe you're looking at a symptom and trying to cure the symptom instead of the problem. If somebody has a cold and they're coughing, you can cure the cough, but you really want to cure the cold. In this episode, they kept running out of cider. The Apple family kept running out of cider. But arguably, that was a symptom, and the real problem was that they didn't have enough workers. Which, when Applejack's friends help, they have enough workers, which leads to more cider. And yes, they worked at high speed, but even if they hadn't, they would have produced a lot of cider. The Apple family could, instead of worrying about running out all the time, they could regularly bring on more workers to help instead of not having enough cider. The big problem that was perceived wasn't actually the big problem. You could have solved something that was actually creating the problem and by extension solved not having enough cider. Solved the issue of not enough workers and you solved the issue of not enough cider. Then also we see in this episode the solution causes other problems. When Flim and Flam increase the speed in order to solve the problem of not being able to keep up with the Apple family's production of apple cider, they end up producing horrible cider. And so they are now causing other problems with their solution. Besides that, even though it's not really addressed in the episode, they're pulling up a ton of apple trees, which is causing more problems. 
The final one that we are going to discuss here is that the solution isn't actually a solution. Flim and Flam at the end are like, hey, you know what? You guys don't want our cider? Let's go to another city. That's a great idea. But that's not really going to make their cider better. They're still bottom of the bottom rung of the ladder cider makers. Unless they improve their machine or don't get impatient, they're still not going to be producing as good of cider. The solution wasn't really a solution. Whenever you are working on villains, don't just look at what problem they can cause. Look at what problem they are trying to solve through their actions. It could be a very personal, very greedy problem, or it could be a problem that really impacts a lot of different people that they may be trying to solve. Again, they might be running into one of these. Maybe the problem isn't a problem. Maybe the problem isn't the problem. Maybe the solution causes other problems, or maybe the solution isn't a solution. But you have to remember that most villains are not going out looking for problems to create. They are looking for solutions to provide. Case closed. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another investigation tomorrow. You can follow me on Twitter or check out my other great story resources on my website. You can find links to each in the episode description. Music by Comfortable Mystery 4 by Kevin McLeod in Competech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. You can find more information in the episode description.